In this lesson, let's compare AppSync with another popular way to build GraphQL APIs, which is to run GraphQL Server in the Lambda function. By running a GraphQL.js or Apollo Server in the Lambda function behind an API gateway endpoint, and uh, write your own resolvers to connect those GraphQL queries to data in DynamoDB or RDS or any other data source that you want to use. A lot of people still do this, even though they could have used the AppSync instead. And a good question is why? Why go through the trouble of writing a GraphQL server and writing those resolvers yourself when there's a managed service that does all of that for you? Well, sometimes you need GraphQL features that just aren't supported by AppSync. Even though it might offer lots of extra benefits like caching and those direct integration with other AWS services. So even though AppSync probably supports most of what you need, like the green bits in the middle here, you have to either make do without the GraphQL features that you want but are missing in AppSync, or you have to implement them yourself somehow if it's even possible. Features like custom scalar types, which AppSync doesn't support. GraphQL has a number of scalar types, which are basically the primitive data types like int or float in your favorite programming languages. AppSync has a number of built-in scalar types in addition to this to represent things like date, timestamps, emails, JSON, URL, and so on, which is great. They are stuff that we use all the time in our AppSync APIs but you can't define your own scalar types, which is something that you can do if you run GraphQL.js or Apollo in Lambda. So you'll be able to define custom geolocation types, for example, that captures latitude and the longitude, which is a very common use case for custom scalar types. And then there's VTL, the template language that you have to use with AppSync. It's got its own learning curve and definitely not everyone's cup of tea. In fact, it's not most people's cup of tea, but the big one, and one that gets mentioned a lot is that there's no schema stitching mechanism like you do with schema federation in Apollo, which is basically a way for you to stitch multiple GraphQL APIs together. So to avoid having a monolithic GraphQL API that have to encompass everything. It's a sort of feature that are really important to large organizations where different teams want to own their part of the schema and want the autonomy to update their service and the schema definitions. So similar to how a GraphQL API would interpret a GraphQL request and then offload different parts of the query to its resolvers to fetch profile data from one DynamDB table and then the tweets from another. Apollo Federation adds a gateway in front of all your GraphQL APIs and is able to stitch the schema from all these APIs together into a sort of super schema and is able to delegate different parts of the query to the relevant GraphQL APIs, which then delegate part of their slice of the query to their resolvers and so on. It's a nice system, but it also introduces a lot of additional complexity to make sure that those individual schemas don't overlap. And when you update one of the GraphQL schemas, you have to rebuild the federation schema as well. And many people in the AppSync community argue that it's complexity that's just not worth it and you could just have the client app talk to a few AppSync APIs. After all, this is a model that we are familiar with and we have used for years with REST. And if the GraphQL schema from these APIs don't need to reference each other frequently, then there's also no M plus one request problem here with this approach. And if you're running GraphQL in a Lambda function, then you also have to replicate all the things that AppSync would have given you, like direct integration with DynamoDB, with Elasticsearch, with RDS and with HTTP endpoints, you will have to write these resolvers yourself and you will have to implement your own caching and manage the cache nodes yourself in addition to the Lambda function that runs the GraphQL server. And you will have to replicate those detailed resolver logs for debugging. And a big thing that you lose out on is the built-in support for group-based authentication with Cognito, which as we discussed in the AppSync versus API Gateway lesson, can be a tricky thing to implement yourself. But on the flip side, running a GraphQL server in Lambda gives you more control of how requests are handled. And although you will have to implement it yourself, it can be trivial to add per resolver metrics for request count, latency, and so on, which with AppSync, you will have to set the resolver logging to all and pass the logs yourself, 
with CloudWatch Logs Insights or something like that. And you can add custom middlewares to take care of cross-cutting concerns like tracing the resolver executions and the resolver metrics and so on. And since you're running a Lambda function behind API Gateway, you can also leverage features that API Gateway supports that AppSync doesn't. Features like usage plans with API keys, so you can rate limit and apply usage quotas by API key, which is useful for building multi-tenant SaaS applications. Or you can use Lambda Authorizer to implement custom authentication logic, which might be useful if you're using a third-party service that you can't integrate with Cognito as a SAML provider. All this being said, there's no reason why you can't just put API Gateway in front of AppSync itself to leverage these features. You can absolutely do that. And one big downside of running GraphQL Server in Lambda is that you now have to deal with Lambda cold starts and your function requires a beefy dependency for the GraphQL server, as well as all the dependencies it needs to talk to every data source. So that can have a serious impact on the latency of those user requests when they hit the cold start. When you use AppSync with its direct integration to DynamoDB and Elasticsearch and so on, you don't have to go through a Lambda function and therefore one less problem to worry about. Even when you do need to use a Lambda function, your function can be a lot lighter because it doesn't need quite as many dependencies since it's just going to do one thing and can therefore code start a lot faster. So even when code starts happen, they are much less impactful to the user experience. At the end of the day, it's about balance, as with all things, and you have to find the right balance for your project. Between what's missing in AppSync and how much it would take to implement them yourself versus the time and effort you have to spend to replicate the things that AppSync gives you out of the box. And my preference is to use AppSync if you can, until you can't, until there are GraphQL features that AppSync doesn't support and you absolutely cannot do without, then you plot a path to migrate to running GraphQL in Lambda.